Quentin Tarantino's Django Unchained is just one of the movies opening tomorrow on Christmas Day, and it's already made some of this year's top ten lists. We're looking at the best movies of 2012 this morning with New York Times film critic A.O. Scott and critic Dana Stevens of Slate.com. Great to have both of you with us. Nice to be here. Nice to be here. We were just saying in the break, Tony, a lot of big movies open this year. Yeah, I think it was a pretty a pretty good year, and it was a year when um, a lot of a lot of very good movies came from kind of from the bigger Hollywood studios. Movies like Argo and Flight um, that uh, that I think were a little better than 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 some of the offerings in in previous year. I, I, I felt like it was a it was a good year. Um, yeah, I think maybe you felt a little bit more strongly that way than I did, but there are certainly some yeah some really unexpectedly strong offerings from the mainstream. Tony, let's count down the list. Your top five. Uh, my top five are um, Amour, a French language film directed by Michael Haneke. Um, not a cheery Christmas movie for anyone looking for, for some lighthearted <laughs> entertainment, but, but really wonderful, powerful, um, devastating movie with two great performances. Um, then Lincoln, speaking of great performances, mm -hmm. just, just the, a movie that, that I just keep coming back to, and I think it's, it's, it's so rich. It's such an interesting story, such a, 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 a wonderful topic, so, so well made. Um, uh, Lincoln, then um, Beasts of the Southern Wild. Um, that's kind of the little indie that could from from the summer that I that I just uh, adored. Um, a movie that's opening a little wider in uh, February, I think, an Israeli documentary called The Gatekeepers, which is about its its interviews with the six living heads of the Israeli secret police service, mm. the Shin Bet, which is. Uh, which is really um, a terrific movie. And then uh, number five, The Master, um, a movie that was not to everyone's taste, but that I thought was just tremendous. Thumbs Scientology. Down. Thumbs Most down people. on The Master. Sorry, Tony. <laughs> um, quickly, your top five. I think my top five overlap with Tony's, right? Yeah. The Master is also in there for me. Um, Queen of Versailles is a wonderful documentary by Lauren Greenfield that um, that's about a lot of things. It's about a very rich couple that's building the biggest house in America and what happens, how that all goes south when the recession hits. Um, Lincoln is also in my top five, and I think it's a movie that really rewards multiple viewings, as you say. It's something that even if you saw it around Thanksgiving, go back and see it at Christmas. You'll see you'll see something else in it again. Zero Dark Thirty also for me yeah, is really one of the, the must-see movies mm -hmm. of the year. What about people renting stuff, Dana? What do you recommend? You mean uh, from the last year? Things from the last year. What to rent? Well, I hope that people will go back and catch Brave. I think Brave, yeah. the Pixar movie, really mm -hmm. got it sort of it sort of got buried. It came out early in the year, and I think a lot of people who are big Pixar heads were a little bit disappointed in Brave. I actually think Brave is really wonderful and great family viewing. Speaking of big picture films, we were talking about this in the break. I love The Dark Knight Rises. I wasn't a huge fan of the first two Batman movies, but I thought this was spectacular. I think that's worth a rental if people missed it. Other movies that may have been missed, by the way, I think it's worth talking about a little bit here. Looper. Don't know if you guys saw Looper, but I thought Looper was fantastic. This is actually. And I'm, top five I'm not list. typically a huge sci-fi guy segment. necessarily, but I thought it was just a really wonderful film. Um, what else kind of got missed here, Jarvis? Um, I think people should go back and see Moonrise Kingdom. Yeah, yes. um, that yeah, was right? a wonderful movie. Uh, the Wes Anderson. It movie. was very nice. Um, really, really charming and a sweet and film. Sweet and and uh, yeah, yeah. What about you, Rebecca? You said you had only one movie in 2012. Sure, right. <laughs> has only gone to one movie this well, entire year. My joke was that I saw one movie in 2012 with you, Jeff Argo, so that was going to be my favorite because right. I we got did, to see we, it with you. We, we did go together to that. By the way, we, The Gray, that's another one. Yes. The Liam Neeson movie where he's, there's his Argo right here. Jarvis and I did sit in the front row, I think. In actually, the very front row. Together. Um, <laughs> And I, let me pitch on one more. I'm sorry, but Jarvis, you can check these out this weekend if you need to, or yes, you guys too. This, this documentary be. I saw that I talked about, Indie Game the Movie, uh -huh. uh, that one the I Video Game seen. Business, was, was yeah. very, very good. All right. Yeah. I enjoyed The Queen of Versailles as well, Dana, because oh. I think it's very timely, and you know, it looks, it deals with the recession, it deals with a couple that's extraordinarily wealthy at the height of things, and then how do things turn out when the tables start to turn, and especially with the housing market? Yeah, The, the Queen of Versailles is this great combination of sort of reality TV juiciness, and then really a lot of substance in terms of its its, its social critique. It's really and fun. one of a lot. I mean, it was a great year for documentaries. I mean, I think mm -hmm. we're, we're living in a great. Period for documentaries, but there's just some of some of my. I had to make a separate list of, of five docs for the for the for the paper because there were so many that were just. The Central so good. Park Five was really yeah. good. Yeah. How to yeah. Survive a Plague was yeah. great. Searching for Sugar Man. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of great. Is things. there one movie that you guys really disagree on? I there think it might be few. Beasts of the Southern Wild. Beasts of the Southern Wild is probably the biggest one, yeah, which we've never really discussed together. But yeah, well. that was that was one that I really wanted to be blown away by. It has such a, a feeling and such a mood and and 
the, the director is a really exciting young director, but mm -hmm. I don't think it all comes together in this movie. It just didn't for me. And part of that had to do with the non-professional acting, which sometimes can be wonderful and spontaneous, and sometimes just really feels like nobody's quite sure what's going on. I thought that girl was amazing. She was. Janae Wallace and, and, and her father, too. And I just, it, it had me from beginning to end, I have to what say. What about I, Les I, Mis? I mean, it's opening Christmas oh, yeah. Day. Oh, yeah. A lot of attention being paid to this one. <laughs> you, you want to take that And not necessarily good attention. It's, I mean, I think that, that people who love this musical, and there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions, or hundreds of millions of people around the world who are, who are fanatical devotees of, 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 the, of the show, will like it. Um, it it's, it's, it's very theatrical. It, it's, it's very large. Um, some of the people who are actually singing in it can actually sing. Um, and they had woman, to Samantha do it Barks, live. It, yes, they had to do it live. Not everyone. I mean... Russell Crowe has a, has a bit of a rough time. Um, Very quickly, before we go, yeah. what's going to win Best Picture and what's your best holiday movie of all time? Hmm, <laughs> what's going to okay. win Best Picture? <laughs> best Picture, I'm going to make a wild guess, Zero Dark Thirty. Yep. And uh, my favorite holiday movie is probably, I actually just watched it last night, the Alistair Sim Christmas Carol, the one from 1951. Tony? Uh, I think Lincoln's going to win Best Picture, um, and by far my favorite holiday movie is Bad Santa. It, <laughs> Bad Santa. Nice <laughs> one. It what a shocker. Hey, oh, Scott. Thank you, Dana <laughs> Stevens. Thanks Scott. as well. Thank Merry you. Christmas, guys.